Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Kam Tao from Amazonian Angelfish. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what's going on in my fish room. Pretty much what's going on like behind the scenes and all that stuff of what I do. And I don't really showcase it to you guys, but I do do this. And um, it's one of the videos where I've always wanted it to make a video of. And I always record myself of doing this, but um, I've been shying away from it. But... It is what I do here and um, I hope you guys do enjoy watching this video here. It, this video is more about fish selection, specifically the word culling and everything that revolves around it. But if you do want to know what's going on in the fish room and you are open minded to see what my process is for behind the scene here, go ahead and continue watching. However, for those that are sensitive to the topic and I do understand where you guys are coming from. Um, well, I'll see you guys on the next video. So this is a continuation of what's going on in the fish room here. Um, this is, these are the babies that uh, I showed you in the last video. They've grown quite a bit. So right now they are about three weeks old after their first meal. So I start counting their date after I start taking care of them, which is feeding them baby brine shrimp. And uh, some people, they start their uh, date a little bit earlier. I like to start it a little bit later, that way I know how they look like at a certain size after my care. This is the stage where I do start to do my calls. Uh, as you can see, some of these guys right here, they do not have all of their fins, like the one in the middle right there. It wouldn't focus because they're, they're just too tiny for the camera to catch but there will be some that has very nice um, bottom fins so right now I'm just focusing on the bottom fins which is the ventral fins and if I don't focus on that then that means in the future the fishes won't have as good ventral fins and to me the ventral fins are the most important because they are the skinniest fins and they are the most sensitive all right so this is after I fed them and they are in a food coma right now so um, they're all on the bottom here there's like a whole bunch of them here and today will be the day where we will have to select the best ones to move on forward to rearing them and raising them up so i'm going to do a little tally mark here as i go along and select the best ones to move on forward here this one right here in particular is there's definitely something wrong with it so that's definitely something one of them that you will need to get rid of and what I look for right now at this stage um, because the fins has already sprouted I can already tell which one will have good fins and which one will have bad fins and for the first generation here you would want to get the best ones because you are combining two different bloodlines into one and pretty much you will get a wild card. And what that means is that there's a whole assortment of finnage type in here that you need to sort through. And for the most part, F1s or the first generation cross will be the ugliest ones. After the third generation, you kind of achieve what you would want already. So. The more you inbreed, it's reverse for angelfish keeping in general. Like the more you inbreed, the better looking they become. Kind of like the koi. The koi angelfish has been inbred so many times that they achieve the red coloration that you guys see. The fish that you see in the middle there, that one has missing ventral fins. So those two in particular you would want to get rid of you would want to select the ones that has the ventral fins so right now i'm just pretty much looking for very symmetrical ventral fins majority of these has ventral fins but they're not symmetrical the black guy right in the middle there he has very good finage very good symmetrical ventral fins so those will be the ones that i'm looking for same with this black guy right here in the middle of the screen there so it's not just a black gene that has the good fins, other genes has good fins as well as long as they are symmetrical, not that one is bent and the other one is straight, those will be the ones that you would want to get rid of. 
also the ones right there in the middle of the screen there those are very clamped ventral fins i also want to get rid of those because they are not spread out enough so although they are symmetrical they are not spread out once they grow up they will not look good at all all right so what you guys see here in the middle of the screen here the black guy his fins right there is splayed notice how it's like going horizontally that's not what you want as well so those are the kind of fish that you look for for the ventral fins even if it's long and it's split like that it is definitely a fish that you should get rid of because in the future when it grows up the fins will not be um, placed where it's supposed to be it's going to go outward protruding outward like that this one right here is a very good example of the ones that you should be keeping it has all the fins that it's supposed to have without any curvatures or without any deformities all right so i was able to catch all the little baby ones in here and the last probably 10 or so is always like the hardest one and i did my counting station over here and these are pretty much the good ones right here um, i just got a picture that's hung on to the 40 gallon breeder and in here i did do a head count and there's 146 good ones so far and these are pre-pea size so they're uh, almost the size of a pea and in here are the ones that needs to be called there is a uh, 275 of them in here so definitely much much more in here all right so these are the ones that are good all right we're gonna go ahead and release all of these guys in this container here back into their tank and the reason why I call so early is because I want to allow them the whole entire 55 gallon tank their entire space to just grow and flourish in here and if I have all those other fish that are you know calls if they're all cramping all the areas over here and all throughout up there like it's really cramped for these guys so by getting rid of the rest of the group and just keeping the good ones at a very small um, stage you allow them to grow much faster and much more beautifully their fins won't be messed up or anything so if you look very carefully all of their fins are there compared to the earlier footages where you will see like fishes that does not have the ventral fins and fishes that has messed up ventral fins so this is the only first call i do four calls and in the end would you believe it that i would only select two of the fishes that are in this entire group to breed and move forward to the next generation so when breeding you want to breed the best of the best so for now these are decent um, after that I'm gonna cut in half I'm gonna keep probably 50 or so of them and um, cut into 25 and then lower down to 10 and then get the two from the 10. So that's what I do for breeding angel fishes. Select the best of the best and move on forward to the next generation. All right guys, so this is one third of the entire batch here. And according to the math, that's how it turned out to be. And right now they are occupying about one third of the tank here. I did get rid of the two thirds of the entire batch. And when you do, select them at this stage I do suggest that you reserve some time in your day to do so because it will take time it took me exactly three hours to get all this done and to go back and forth between the tank you know usually I do it up here but I didn't have any cover on there and um, that this tank was in there and it was just a disaster so I decided to do it over there all right so even after the selection i'm still not happy i think that they are still too crammed within this 55 gallon here so i'm gonna go ahead and select all the black ones out of here so that the black one doesn't cram the non-black ones and the non-black one doesn't cram the black ones pretty much vice versa so pretty much they don't cram each other i'm gonna go ahead and put them in this tank right here and thank you guys for coming out and chit-chatting with me and you know just getting my rid of my fishes here i really do appreciate it it does really open the tank space up for me and as you guys can see in here there's nothing else in here anymore so i'm gonna go ahead and put the uh the black ones in here all right so after 30 minutes or so i finally completed my mission and i'm gonna go ahead and uh, dump all of these guys 
over here. There we go. And we just go ahead and release all of them at once. There you go. Now these guys will not be crammed within one living space. And these guys will also not be crammed. It's a lot more blacks than I expected, but it's good. Alright guys, I just want to touch base on breeding here. And um, I talked with someone earlier before and uh, pretty much that person said that they didn't like how um, they don't believe in inbreeding or they don't believe in line breeding, the siblings to siblings thing. It just doesn't seem right. But um, one thing that I have to say is it's the opposite for breeding angelfish. Maybe it's right for other fish species, but for angelfish species, um, I think it's best if we line breed them. And uh, this is what you guys are seeing right now. It is a crossbreed between two different bloodlines. And as you can see right in front of you here, neither of the parents has gill plate deformity. However, most of the babies that come out, they have gill plate deformities. And people will tell me, hey, you know, you should stop inbreeding. You know, those the nasty inbreds. Well, if you look at it, you can also say that it's the opposite way around. You know, it's purebred. It's not inbred anymore. It's considered purebred. Or if, you know, you crossbreed them, you say, hey, it's it's good. You know, it's good genetics come together. You're crossbreeding them. Other people can say the opposite where they are muddling the line. They are considered mutts, you know. So it goes both ways, whether you crossbreed them or line breed them. Um, I think the most difficulty I have in breeding is crossbreeding them because crossbreeding them it creates a whole plethora of different looking angelfishes and from those you have to line breed exactly what you want to strengthen the traits that you are looking for so all these fishes right here the most difficulties I have was just selecting the bad ones out and as you guys saw earlier before there was so many of them that I had to get rid of just because they are uh, the first generation they are a cross between two unrelated bloodlines and that's something that I don't like about you know not having like line breeding and it's very difficult very frustrating however it's also very rewarding because you can create because then you can create fish that you never seen before and um, you know from there you start to line breed and you can get exactly what you are looking for these are just pretty much the fishes that did make the cut however so very few of them left that did make the cut so with that like I don't really like crossbreeding but at the same time, it's the only way to create new bloodlines that you can truly claim that it's yours. Because like if you if you breed angelfishes that are of the same bloodline, then they are still considered other breeders' bloodline. And you're pretty much making replicas of it. And uh, by crossbreeding, you've gone through the hardship of selecting the bad ones out and keeping the good ones. And even so, like at this stage right here, at this very small stage right here that they are they're not going to develop deformities yet they are not going to develop the proper finish that you want yet so right now it's not the final stage that you can make the cut there's many other stages when they get bigger that you have to continue making the cut so that you can find the exact ones that you want to keep on producing in the future or if you want to continue crossing that line with another um, different bloodline that you created yourself so like putting four different fishes together into one single bloodline looking for certain traits like colors or finage so for me it's always going to be finage and uh, i do have like their colors in mind of what they have and what they have to offer they have a lot of potential but you know, in the end, it's really what you want, and um, not specifically like 
crossbreeding is good, not specifically line breeding is good. It depends on your direction of where you want to go with your breeding. Line breeding is the way to go if you want to create good looking fishes. However, crossbreeding is the way to go if you want to create new looking fishes. <laughs> so it goes both hand in hand. Um, to create your own bloodline, you have to pretty much use two unrelated fish, cross them together, make the babies, and then from there you would want to line breed so that the babies, the, the two babies that you have selected has the best traits or the best finish or colors that you want to continue forward going with the bloodline. So in a way it goes hand in hand and not one way is better than the other. For example right here this is a very good example of a fish that has been crossbred and it has very very nice very wide finishes like that and without crossbreeding I would not be able to produce this kind of bloodline. They will not have this kind of finage on them and it's just not just one fish but a whole bunch of fish that has this very wide very broad finish that they have there and um you know it's you can't really you can't really say that you know line breeding is good line breeding is also bad too you know at some point in your breeding game you have to cross breed them to a different bloodline to strengthen the bloodline you know because over time your your strain your bloodline that you create it becomes weaker it becomes like uh, unproducible uh, because the sizing of the fish is so small or the fertility rate of the fish is not that good so line breeding is good for a while and you have, eventually you have to cross breed them so it goes hand in hand it goes both ways not just one way it goes pretty much both ways and both of them should be respected by the people out there that are breeding angel fishes all right guys i'm back again and uh, another update for you guys uh, so two weeks has passed by since the beginning of this video here that i am creating for you guys here and the this is how the angel fishes are looking these guys are around pre dime size and at this size right here i want to do another batch of the selection to move on forward to the next generation and usually when i do make the selection i look for color i look for well i look for the color combination i look for like the finish and i look for any deformities that are visible and um, i noticed that this batch right here they have the gill plate deformity and it's not that the parents showcases the gill plate deformity it's just that the gill plate deformity it's just a um, combination of the two different bloodlines coming together and they're um, they're incompatible with each other pretty much that form this gill plate deformity right here as you can see here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, I do this pretty early on and I do this pretty heavily um, just because I want to not crowd any of the good fishes that are in this batch right here and as you can see you know I try my very best and I do do my selection very very carefully to move on forward to rearing these fish up and to have all of them in here and to crowd each other it's not a good idea so the first selection that I do is at pre pea size and another one I do is at this stage which is at pre dime size and it is always better to do it earlier than later um, if they are at pre pea size and it will take them one additional week just to get all the batch into pea size and do your selection however if you do it them at pre pea size then it's you cut that one week off and you just go ahead and they just grow so much faster without the rest of the group and same thing with these guys as well if you do them at pre dime size then they definitely will grow so much faster and you just only want to keep the good ones you don't want to keep any of the bad ones my goal in breeding angel fishes is to look for certain trait and um, that's what breeding is all about in, uh, in, in general and not, it's not just angel fish you're looking for certain trait and you want to enhance those certain trait that you do see um, you also at the same time keep in mind the color combinations that they have they don't have it I'm not too upset about it the next generation I will work with something that I of what I have 
as long as they have the trait that I'm looking for. And um, you know, being a breeder, you just had to really focus on um, what you want in the end goal and not just breeding fish just for the heck of breeding fish. And uh, that's, I think that's one of the things that it's very fundamental that the breeder should learn um, initially and stick with it. And to me, uh, my saying is that it's all about the fins. If the fins aren't good, I ain't gonna breed a fish. You know, same thing with you guys. And I know that you guys are like me, you know, <laughs> coming to my um, basement here or going to a fish store, or going to any breeder's house, you want to select the best fish to move on forward to the next generation. You want to keep the best looking fish because you paid for it. You know, it's your money, it's your time. And, you know, being a breeder, you would have, you would want to have the same mentality that hey I want to breed good fishes so that when people come over they can buy my fish and it gives you like a satisfied feeling that hey I'm one of those breeders that provide good quality fishes to the community and you know it's just a very warm feeling that you know you did this all by yourself and nobody else did it you know and I also had someone that um, they wanted a blue pearl scale angel fish and I didn't have any. At that time I was pretty upset because I couldn't do it myself. I didn't have any blue pearl scale angel fish and uh, you know my friend really wanted it, that fish but I wasn't able to um, breed that fish for him but I had to think about myself and think about my goals and, I, and I'm like you know what I'm breeding fish for myself and I want to breed fish for the community that looks really good and I can yeah easily just combine a pearl scale angel fish with any of the blue angel fish that I have here and therefore I'll create blue pearl scale angel fish but it's not as easy as said than done because even when I do so like the gene combination um, the color combination it will take years to do that and it it's also about the fins as well too like for me if it, the fins doesn't look good ain't nobody want it not even me you know not even nobody will want it even my friend that wanted it he, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he won't even want it too so it really depends on your goal and for me it's not the color combination um, blue pearl scale it's also about the fins of how erect it looks like how straight it looks and how wide it looks like all these fishes that you see here like I have a purpose and I have a goal and I want to create like the perfect fish for everyone for myself as well and you know it's, it goes a long way of planning and determining which fish to put together and everything and the color combinations as well keeping track of what is recessive and what is dominant recessive gene is always the hardest for me to work with I know that with the color combination it's very easy to just combine the different colors together and uh, create the fish that you want however in the end goal you want fishes to look very beautiful and not just have the color combinations that you like and for me um, I always want the best Pinoy looking or like pr pretty much reaching the ultimate goal of creating the smoky Pinoy Paraiba and that's pretty much a fish that has all the possible angelfish gene that you can put together that looks good at least in my eyes and you know I started with combining a blue to a silver I'm still at this stage right here where it's uh, black with recessive for blue and I'm working with the blue combining it with the, with a clown and everything with all the possible genes and in order to do that it does take time and it does take a lot of dedication and if you guys I know that you guys are busy same here I'm just a regular dude I go to work and everything I'm just like you I'm just a normal dude I do my feedings once in the morning and once at night and do my regular routine water change but I hope that my videos and the quality of my angel fish shows and if I can do it you guys can do it too and I hope to motivate every single one of you guys out there that are watching my video here. I want you guys to produce good quality angel fishes for me as well too and I know that there's a lot of you guys out there that produce very good quality angel fishes out there and I'm very very tempted to buy fishes from you guys and to improve my bloodline you know sometimes I want to move forward however sometimes these fishes their fins they look so good and you know I can't move forward you know if I focus too much on the fins then I won't ever get the color combinations that I want however I have to think about that you know these guys right here they have very good finage and if I do work on them even though this guy right here in particular is recessive for blue um, in the future his baby will look absolutely stunning if they are a Pinoy Paraiba Smokey you know and I'm here for the long haul 
and I know you guys will be here for the long haul as well. I don't think I will ever get tired of keeping raising breeding angel fishes. So, and working with this guy right here is like the silver zebra that is recessive for blue. It's like taking another step back, but I'm willing to take another step back just to get the finish correctly. You know, the foundation is always the key for me here. All right, so the babies that you guys are seeing right here, they're pretty much the baby of the guy that you guys just saw. And it goes to show that finish is more important than color combinations. And all these babies right here, they have very nice, straight, luscious, flowing fins of how they are supposed to look like. And it goes with what I'm saying that if you just combine any random fish that has the color combinations that you want, then, you know, the fins are going to be messed up, you know, they're not going to look up to par. The body shape is not going to look correctly compared to if you focus on the fins, if you, like I cannot say enough, the fins is so important. It's the very basic fundamental of any angel fish that you have that you have to have good proper finish. You can always, always work with the color combinations and in the end get the same result with better finish and better looking fishes. Alright, so we went ahead and made the, the selection. There's 30 of them in here. And pretty much these are the good ones. Like I said, I don't have much, but the one that I did held back, they are the ones that are the best, pretty much. So these will be, these will not be included into the next generation right here. As you can see, some, most of these has really good finish, but you know, we want the best. So these will be the best. All right, so I ran into a dilemma while Selecting these guys to move forward on with the next process, which is growing them up, and they all look pretty nice. <laughs> they all look pretty nice, and I'm stuck, dude. Like I can't. Like there's so many of them in here. Like if you look, there's just so many of them in here, and they're all cram, and I don't want to cram them. So I think I came up with a solution. What I'm gonna do is there's two type of blacks in here, and I'm gonna divide them. One is one type of the black is going to be the ghost, as you can see here, and the other type of black is going to be the non, the the non ghost, which does not have the ghost gene. Um, these are all recessive for Philippine blue, so I'm going to keep this tank in here that has the ghost in here, and then I'm going to split up the other group that does not have the ghost into that tank over there. That means that I have to get rid of this these fishes over here and these fishes all look very nice so I have to get rid of them and uh, in the next two weeks or so I'm gonna go ahead and ship these guys out these guys are um, sold already so like look at their fins it's, like so nice and perfect it's like it's very big and luscious and they're just absolute very very beautiful like tell me you can go to a fish store and find fish that has this nice of fins and the color combination as well and the color combinations like I said it comes second and because I focus on the fins now the color combination comes in and man they they're looking very stunning like look at that guy <laughs> it's just absolutely look at the blue on the dorsal fin right there or the shoulder right there is so nice and you know if you focus on fins first I think the color combination will definitely um, arrive as you continue breeding on look how blue that is guys all right I'm gonna go ahead and do what I do and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move them forward to the tank down here I'm gonna divide the tank in here these are the ones that I'm keeping for myself and uh, yeah I'm gonna divide the tank in half with a breeder with the egg crate and uh, keep the other uh, keep those guys up there down here and keep mines over here all right, so I did a head count and there's 56 total. So I'm gonna do 28 in here, and here is 28. I'm gonna go ahead and um, get rid of some of the water here. And go ahead and release these guys over here to this tank in here. So this tank in here, there's um, 28 in here, 28 in here. This was cloudy because I just did a water change. And in here is 30, so they're all pretty evenly spread out. Um, this one's 30, it's 
55 gallon, a little bit more than 40, so it's fine if it has a little bit more angel fishes in here, but. Overall, they're pretty happy, they're pretty dandy in here. Um, I really don't want to cull any of these at this size right now, so. Uh, and they all look pretty good, and it's not like the other batch where there was like a lot of bad ones. Maybe something with a black jean where it carries something over where it makes the fins a little bit better, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Or maybe it's the Bulgarian jean that carries something that doesn't make the fins look good. You know, who knows? <laughs> like I said, every jean carries something with them and um, it definitely affects how the fish look. Alright guys, I just wanted to give you guys an update. This is about two weeks later and this is how the fish look like. Um, they have all the fins intact, however, they still have missing gill plate. Um, I was busy with work and I wasn't able to do my selection for the next generation here. So they grew out a little bit more than I would like. There are some that has fully gill plate like this one does. Like the gill plate it looks fine. Yeah, this one's gill plate is fine. The other one's gill plate is not fine. So um, I did have someone come over and uh, select some of these fishes and so I made sure that in the end when she after she was done with making her selection I did make sure to see that they all have their gill plates intact and the Bulgarians here has it much worse than the blacks for reasons unknown I have no idea why but um, I have a feeling that I will have very little of these left and uh, when my friend she was selecting these I was like oh shoot don't pick the ones that has the gill plate deformities and uh, I was I was very nervous while while she was picking them out because I just don't feel good, you know. But <laughs> I, in the end, I did make sure that um, what she had was good. All right, guys. So I just want to showcase to you guys um, the amount that is in here. And these guys are around I want to say between dime and nickel size. They're not quite nickel size yet, but yeah, definitely two weeks has passed and they have grown a lot. And you can kind of see on their body there like what kind of finish, what kind of sh fin shape they have, what kind of body shape they have. They have very nice erect fins. And the fins are pretty good in my standard. You know, the definitely the wild bloodline is very strong and prominent where um, it definitely does get rid of that curvature of the ventral fins right there. So yeah, I just want to showcase you guys um, how the tank look like right now and uh, this is the first tank before the selection and over here is the second tank before the selection this is how many that's in here and over here is the final third tank the 55 gallon tank here that house all of the Bulgarians or the non-blacks pretty much. All right, so this is after the selection and I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys what is left over after the selection here. And pretty much what I kept here are the best of the best here. And so that's one thing that, you know, we want to work on as a breeder is to really control the population. There's definitely nothing in here anymore. This tank is definitely opened up for you know other fish to go ahead and live in there and um, right now there's 22 in here and there's 22 over there so these are very evenly distributed all right so this is how they look like right now and you know people have different opinions about cross breeding and line breeding and all that stuff and I have my own opinion as well and you know opinions are opinions however numbers are fact at the beginning we have a total of 146 that were good and 275 that were bad with a grand total of the surviving batch now keep in mind that egg counts wise there's much more eggs but just the ones that did survive that did not fungus or did not grow well those were excluded so just focusing on the ones that did survive to the callable stage was 421. So the numbers that we are dealing with right now are the 22 angelfishes in the 240 breeder along with the 5 angelfishes that my friend she bought for me earlier prior to me making this clip of the video here. And that leads us to 49 good ones 
and in the beginning there was 421 so if we divide 49 by 421 our percentage that are good in this batch is 11.6 percent this is pretty much the cream of the crop right here that i am offering to the community and if you guys do like my fishes here <laughs> go ahead and uh, contact me through facebook messenger we can definitely work something out these fishes are ten dollars a piece at the size that they are right now and um, you know this is a great opportunity especially if you want to improve the vigor of your bloodline the mother of this bloodline is 25 percent wild santa isabel so you guys can see here the father's fin the ventral fin doesn't look as great because because like i said it comes with the bloodline as you guys can see here, the wild bloodline does correct the curvature of the ventral fins and the babies look great. It goes to show that crossbreeding is good in terms of vigor. However, in my experience, and the number shows that crossbreeding does not create good looking fishes. <laughs> like I said many times in the past, it is a wild card and you would get a lot of ugly fishes however because of that you have to go through the hardship of collecting all the good ones getting the cream of the crop getting the best ones and breeding the best of the best with this number right here it's such a low number that many breeders would not ever speak of because it's just what it is you know it's it happens in the backstage and no one would want to talk about this and just because you have a certain bloodline that doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to yield that amount of good ones you know um i've heard that uh, a certain bloodline is so good and when you breed it like not a hundred percent of them is good and breeders were disappointed and it's definitely something that i want to point out just because you buy fishes from me doesn't mean a hundred percent that the babies are going to turn out looking like that no it means that you have to do your job as a breeder. You have to not have such high expectation and you have to understand that if you line breed, it will create good fishes. However, you still have to do the same process, but the number yield will just be higher than what is expected from if you are crossbreeding. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I do not enjoy crossbreeding angel fishes. However, it is the only way of creating new and more vigorous angel fishes. And in the process, you guys can see here, hundreds and hundreds of lives are lost because of that. You know, I don't enjoy culling the fishes that I create. However, breeding and creating these beautiful angel fishes comes with a responsibility that all of us has to carry on our backs and that responsibility is to prevent the angel fishes that are not good looking to be released into the community and to other potential breeders that can breed those fishes i know that this journey we all take is hard there will be times where we want to give up there will be times where we fail and lose everything we have. There will be moments that we doubt ourselves. We will have to start over. However, we do not start with nothing. We start with experience, motivation, and the hunger to be the best versions of ourselves in order to achieve our dreams and aspirations. This is through the decisions we make in the world that we choose to live in. I want to lead, motivate, and empower the angelfish breeding family by example and not just by talking. The beauties in life that we see does not come without sacrifice. What you saw here played my heartstrings and yours will too when you cross that bridge and face that decision head on. I often ask myself, why is it so difficult to find good quality angelfishes? or the bare minimum, angel fishes that has all of the fins of how they are supposed to look like. I dream of what the world can be, a vision of all of us moving forward from being just a casual breeder to being responsible breeders who select against deformities. Breeders who have the willpower to prevent future generations of thousands of lives from inheriting deformities by sacrificing 
what they created. I understand that not everybody will see my vision, that not everybody will join me. I want to stand up for my dreams, and I know that if I want quality angelfishes, it is up to me, you, and all of us to work together, define our values, and persistently chasing our passion. Whatever decision you choose, just know that I respect your decision and understand what side of the story you are coming from. In the end, we are in this together. We travel on this beautiful yet rough journey together. And along route, I lay down to think, is this sacrifice worth it in the end? Will I be happy with a smile? I can only wish that, in the end, you are truly happy with a smile.